Hey everybody, um, so recently I did a video and um, I was talking about how um, I think that Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green are kind of criminally underrated games and how more people should be playing them. Um, if you want to check that out, I will put a link um, up here. I think it is. Yeah, it's either here or here. And uh, you can watch that if you want to. Um, uh, so, but I, I felt like I had only really kind of scratched the surface of what I thought was really cool about Delta Green and uh, why Delta Green has kind of been living in my head rent free and taking over more and more of the headspace that I devote to games. Like everything that I've been writing lately has been um, uh, in the either Delta Green or Call of Cthulhu. So, um, yeah, um, like I said, like I did this other video and I kind of, I, I went pretty in depth about the, um, the D100 system, um, like game mechanics, um, insanity and, uh, how, um, uh, how level-based, and, or, or level based, like class based games like uh, D and D or Pathfinder or what have you, uh, compare to skills based games um, or uh, like classless games like Call of Cthulhu, Delta Green, uh, Gumshoe, Cepheus System, Traveler, uh, stuff like that, right? Um, so. I don't really want to get, I don't want, don't want to get into rules mechanics as much. Like, um, for instance, if you wanted to play Delta Green, you could play using Gumshoe if you wanted to. Like one of the, my favorite books that I found, um, for, uh, for Delta Green that has a lot of, uh, like background into what Delta Green is about is actually Gumshoe. Um, I don't, I don't like the system as much. I, uh, I, I don't, uh, personally, I like 7th edition Call of Cthulhu, um, which is another way that you could play. So Gumshoe is a, you know, it's a very, very rules light system. It's a D6 system. I think, uh, Cepheus Engine, if you've ever played any kind of Cepheus or, or like Traveler, um, uh, but it's like very, very... Rules light D6, um, where if you're playing the game, um, or if you're, if you're running it and then you, you say to your players like, uh, oh, okay, um, do you have any skill in like natural world or do you have any skill in like military tactics or whatever the skill is, right? And I say, yeah, I say, yeah, I have, I have skill in military tactics. It's like, okay, well you automatically get the clue. Like you automatically, you know that just from looking at these bodies that they have been shot while they were on the ground, like after they were dead, like they were, they were already lying on the ground and then somebody came by and shot them all again, like after they were lying on the ground or whatever. Right. So, um, yeah, like if you, if you, you know, if you wanted to play the game, you could play using uh, Gumshoe, if you wanted to play with Delta Green, actual Delta Green rules, you can play using Delta Green rules. And Delta Green, the actual game itself, the official game, is going to be, um, it's based on 6th edition Call of Cthulhu. And um, it is, uh, it's also simplified. It's a, it's a slimmed down sort of, uh, sixth edition kind of rules for Call of Cthulhu. Um, and, uh, I was digging around, I was trying to find out more about the game and, uh, something that I found is kind of interesting. So apparently the setting, the, uh, first appeared in a 1992 scenario and, um, you know, it, it is, it, uh, Delta Green is set in the Cthulhu mythos, that's one thing where, you know, it has it in common with any other kind of Cthulhu Mythos game. But, um, like, if you didn't know um, recently, like just recently, 
like within the last 10 years or so, um, everything H.P. Lovecraft passed over into the public domain. So if you wanted to make a Lovecraftian themed board game or whatever, um, you can do that without permission from his estate. Um, like uh, you could you could make a, a Lovecraft themed game just be, because because he's been dead for over 200 years, like just recently. So his um, mythos has passed over into the public domain. Um, so the, but there's a lot of, you know, Cthulhu themed games out there. But um, Delta Green and, and Call of Cthulhu specifically are based on like Chaosium, of their D100 rule set. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so the, the 1992 scenario though, because this is interesting because um, like I'm a, a 90s kid, you know, right? Like I, I, I was a teenager in the 90s. And, um, like, X-Files was super, super popular. And, uh, and, and that's one of the criticisms that uh, Delta Green gets a lot is that, like, oh, it's just, you know, it's ripping off X-Files. Well, I think that 1992 is before X-Files. <laughs> so maybe it's the other way around. Maybe X-Files rips off uh, Delta Green. But, um, so, yeah, Delta Green, you know, um, it, it is... A contemporary setting, typically, um, and uh, I, I talked about this in the other video, where um, the 1990s, or sorry, the 1920s setting, the 1990s setting, I love, 1920s setting, doesn't really do that much for me, right? Except, except the um, detective noir kind of setting, right? Um, like, uh, if I was going to do some kind of a detective game, like a private investigator that's tracking down something supernatural, um, I would actually, I take it back, I would probably either go, like, Sherlock Holmes. I would go, like, full Sherlock Holmes and, like, the Diogenes uh, Club and, like, um, you know, the, like, the London Underground and, uh, uh, 18, whatever, like, gaslight kind of Cthulhu, or I would go more in the, like, 1990s direction, right? Um, so, so, yeah, right, um, getting back to that, like, 1990s, why I love that setting, um, when I was a, you know, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, like, X-Files was super, super popular, um, Another thing that was really, really popular was uh, Clive Barker. Clive Barker was super, super popular, um, like um, Nightbreed and uh, Hellraiser. And um, one, uh, like I was super into Clive Barker, right? And I actually have, I have my, my personal, my, my signed first edition uh, Clive Barker right here, my, my signed, uh, The Great and Secret Show, <laughs> first edition, uh, Clive Barker, which is, I think, the only signed book that I actually have, um, because, like, you know, I was super into, uh, like, Nightbreed and, and Hellraiser and, uh, but also, um, Lord of Illusions. So, uh, Lord of Illusions... And this is kind of interesting because uh, Clive Barker, you know, he did um, Hellraiser in like, I don't know, like 1992 or something like that. I want to say, I'm not sure, it might have been earlier than that, but, uh, or that might have been like Hellraiser 2 or something like that. But he, um, he, you know, just blew up, like had a super, super popular, like, uh, like, Hellraiser was just crazy, crazy popular. They're still making Hellraiser movies. Um, it's like, I don't even know how many sequels they are, how many reboots it's gone through. Um, and then, you know, Nightbreed was a follow-up and still 
like a popular franchise um, has more of a cult following. And, um, and then finally, Lord of Illusions was a detective noir movie that, um, that Clyde Barker did. And um, so I think on uh, Nightbreed and, and Hellraiser, Clyde Barker was the writer and director and um on uh um lord of illusions he was writer director producer and it was just like his um his baby his uh his like total kind of uh labor of love project and um scott bakula was in it um from um quantum leap and but he is a, a detective who is kind of falling around all of these uh, like supernatural things and um, gets involved in this case where there's a cult that kidnaps a kid. And um, there's like this charismatic cult leader who is, I don't know, kind of like a, a satanic Jesus Christ kind of figure. Um, and um, so the movie was a total bomb. It just, it bombed at the box office. The critics hated it. I personally love that movie. I love that movie. And um, and then when, when it bombed and it was such a like critical failure and box office failure that it made Clyde Barker just quit Hollywood. <laughs> and, and like, I love that movie. Clyde Barker, you know, he's still writing. He's still doing his art and he's, he's still... Like, I think that he, he's beaten cancer a couple of times, but he's still, you know, still at it. Right. Um, but um, you can tell that games like Delta Green and, and also like Cult, Divinity Lost, they, they owe a big debt to uh, Clyde Barker. Um, that it's, you know, it's a big, it's a big influence for them. As well as like things like Roman Polanski, like uh, Ro Rosemary's Baby, and and th things like that. Like um, uh, I talked about um, the uh, the Night Floors and um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, Impossible Landscape scenario for um, for Delta Green. That's uh, um, uh, it's very, it seems like it's very heavily influenced by, uh, by Rosemary's Baby. Um, but, uh, so I want to get into the Delta Green, like, timeline and, um, uh, some of the Delta Green history and, and just the, the, the Delta Green setting and, um, and why, like, kind of like the classic setting for Delta Green is going to be, like, mid 1990s and um typically like fbi agents or uh like uh desert storm veterans and and getting into like afghanistan war and stuff like that and uh but uh yeah so we're, so that's what i wanted to talk about right and why i love that setting so much so i've got the uh the delta green timeline here and um <clears throat> this is, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure that this is from Fairfield Project. And uh, Fairfield Project is just a, it's like a, um, it's a, it's a Call of Cthulhu Delta Green kind of wiki. Um, and it's a, you know, some kind of a fan project. Uh, but uh, it has tons and tons of information on it. Uh, uh, has going to have like some one shots on it. It's got, got all kinds of lore and like, um, different kinds of history stuff on it. Um, but I couldn't, couldn't find this. So this is in my personal, my personal notion, my, my personal, uh, Cole Cthulhu Delta Green wiki, but, uh, I have my Delta Green timeline up here. Um, so 1917, the office of Naval Intelligence or ONI creates the P4 division Parapsychology, paranormal, and psychic phenomena, otherwise known, otherwise known as P division, to look into reports of paranormal during World War One. So think um, like uh, Hellboy, like the um, 
the Bureau for uh, Paranormal Research and Defense, I think is what it was in Hellboy, or like um, Men in Black uh, would be maybe the PG kind of version. And um, uh, and then <laughs> like Lord of Illusions would be more like the rated R kind of version. Um, <clears throat> so a Project Covenant, uh, 1928, the raid on Innsmouth, um, which is the one that everybody knows the, the story of the Shadow Over Innsmouth, which is the classic um, Lovecraft uh, story about the town of Innsmouth and the raid on Innsmouth, where there is a sort of deep one kind of invasion that is happening in the town of Innsmouth in um, like Rhode Island or whatever it is, Massachusetts, and uh, the FBI comes in and just slaughters the whole the whole town, just takes out this uh, deep one invest in infestation. Um, and uh, and then that's typically where a lot of people say that Delta Green was created, was the um, a, a special branch of the FBI that's devoted to um, defense against the paranormal inside the United States. And um, so, yeah, 1928, Project Covenant, the raid on Innsmouth, uh, the Treasury Department, the Secret Service, the Department of the Navy, um, ONI, U.S. Marine Corps, U.S. Coast Guard, and the Bureau of Investigation, the predecessor of the FBI raid on Innsmouth, uh, recovering extensive evidence of deep ones, and a bit about the mythos at large, survivors eventually folded into the P Division. 1928 to 1941, P Division raids and destroys numerous Deep One colonies throughout the globe, as well as gathers numerous mythos, tomes, and artifacts. December 1941, the United States enters World War II after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. P Division also joins, merging into the OSI, or sorry, OSS, Office of Strategic Services. The group becomes officially known as Delta Green, after the green tri triangles that mark Delta Green files. So Delta Green is a is an official organization in this time period, and it is like a government funded organization. There is going to be like embedded um, agents and um, uh, congressmen and people who are at the very top of it that are in like the Pentagon and stuff like that. But it's a still it's a very shadowy organization. Um, and uh, they're kind of working behind the scenes, doing things to protect, uh, fight the paranormal and uh, investigate the paranormal and, you know, going around dealing with like deep one infestations and what have you, uh, various like uh, fights against the Nazis, um, their occult mythos organization um, known as... Um, the SS Karatekia, Kera, Kera, um, which is going to be the uh, like the Nazi version of uh, Delta Green or the the um, the SS like um, occult uh, division, and um, so yeah, like uh, um, 1944 or 1947 uh, Roswell incident. UFO crashes in Roswell, New Mexico, and um, Truman orders the creation of the Majestic 12 Special Studies Program to study the remains. Former Delta Green members successfully lobbied for the reinstatement of Delta Green as an independent organization. So, um, yeah, like, again, you know, this is, um, uh, I think that this is where um, Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green take a take a a branch like they they kind of diverge a little bit um, because uh, Call of Cthulhu typically your investigators are just going to be normal people um, they're not going to have access to like military hardware you know not that you're going to have Delta Green agents with like tanks and um, um, although you know there is one scenario where I've that that I've seen where um, there's like some soldiers that kind of face off against a Shoggoth um, with uh, like military hardware. But uh, 
It's still, like, I'd prefer to have, like, an AC-130 versus, like, a bunch of Marines with some tow missile launchers or something in Afghanistan. But um, the uh, your Delta Green, um, I think that uh, it does have a slightly more militaristic kind of spin on it. Like, uh, you know, it's going to be much more set in the modern kind of setting where your players are going to have access to more military hardware. They're going to have access to more modern things like cell phones and computers. And um, they aren't going to have to know how to go into the library and use a microfiche when they can just look up the answer on their cell phone. Um, Although, like, the classic kind of setting, typically a lot of the the Delta Green stuff that I've seen is set in the mid-1990s. So you aren't necessarily just going to be able to look up the answer on your cell phone. But uh, but yeah, so 1947, you know, Roswell crash, um, Majestic 12, and a little bit of foreshadowing here, Majestic 12 and um, Delta Green do not get along. And um, Majestic 12 is the CIA um, branch that deals with, like, um, let's see, we, like UFO crashes, but also is running um, counterintelligence operations against the Russians who are um, like GRU agents who are looking for information about uh, like UFOs and um, alien and alien um, artifacts and things like that. Uh, anything involving like flying saucer crashes. And this is all kind of ripped from the headlines. There was a real Majestic 12 and there is today, there is GRU. Um, and uh, the, um, uh, I think during the time period, the official explanation is that uh, Majestic 12, while they were set up to investigate like UFO any kind of um, UFO things that are happening inside the United States, they're also um, running like counterintelligence operations against the Russians, but um, they're sort of feeding them like bad information. Like um, if there's Russians that are hanging around like Air Force bases and stuff like that or that are trying to collect information about UFOs, and then they're eating up any anything, any kind of disinformation that Majestic 12 is giving them about UFOs. Probably some, some if not all, of the actual UFO sightings are um, uh, experimental aircraft testing. So they're they're running counterintelligence operations against the Russians, and uh, and then that's a lot of what's going on between Majestic 12 and GRU, and then uh, Delta Green, which is FBI. Um, they're doing all kinds of other things behind the scenes, but also kind of eventually end up fighting a, a shadow war kind of thing against, um, Majestic 12, um, because Majestic 12 sort of becomes corrupted by like, uh, a, uh, UFO, um, or sorry, an, an alien kind of influence. And they become sort of like a cargo cult where they're, um, trying to just get all kinds of alien technology and stuff like that and uh, like sell um, sell alien technology and uh, integrate it into our society and stuff like that. But they just become completely corrupted by these uh, alien influences. And um, yeah, so we, you know, we, we go, keep going with um, the uh, Delta Green operations up until um, 1969, and 1969, um, the uh, the Vietnam War ends up spilling over into Cambodia, and um, this is what we call the fall of Delta Green in the Delta Green timeline, and um, basically it's a series of uh, botched raids into Cambodia. Um, during the Vietnam War that disastrously lead to the deaths of, of hundreds of American servicemen. And uh, the Nixon administration is forced to sort of um, 
uh, disband, like cover up the, uh, or, or launch an invasion of Cambodia in order to cover up this botched, um, these or botched Delta Green operations into Cambodia, which by the way, is an amazing setting for running Delta Green if you want to. 1969 in Vietnam is an absolutely amazing, super fun setting to run um, Delta Green games in. So, um, yeah, so in 1970, um, a disgraced, disgraced Delta Green is officially disbanded and then begins its life again as an illegal conspiracy and thus begins the cowboy years. And uh, this area is marked by a very, very loose organization within the conspiracy with members mostly acting on their own accord. And um, this is my favorite, absolute favorite setting, like this time period, in between like 1969 to say like uh, 2001 is my absolute um favorite time period like the uh the cowboy um what do they call it the the cowboy years of delta green where delta green operates as a sort of conspiracy inside the government where um it operates on a cell structure and the um the basically you if you are a delta green agent or like an asset some kind of operative you might maybe know five other Delta Green agents. You might get only called upon to do one or two Delta Green related um, missions in your life. And then the people that you know who are Delta Green are typically going to be in your cell. And the, uh, the cell structure uses um, letters of the alphabet. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a little bit because it's cool. Um, but so say that you are J cell, then your, uh, your agent name might be agent jewel or agent Jerry <laughs> agent, uh, special agent, um, uh, gypsy. No, that's not, that's not a J name, but you get the idea, right? So you might identify other members of your cell just by their agent name and knowing that their name starts with a G or a J or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so that is, that is my absolute favorite time period to run games is during the, the cowboy years of Delta Green, where, um, basically Delta Green is just an illegal conspiracy, a very loose knit kind of cell organization inside the United States that is just agents that are sort of acting on their own accord to defend the United States against the supernatural. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, okay, let's get into cell structure just real quick. I want to go into, uh, um, so back to, uh, Fairfield Project. Um, where is my, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, Fairfield Project, um, here's a little bit of the, uh, cell structure of Delta Green, um, a lot of this is going to be through the cowboy years, um, but some of this is, you know, like the still have um, different cells after like 2010. Um, uh, so like any, but anyone who is an A cell through C cell is going to be the uh, like top leadership. Um, A cell is going to be the... Um, like organizational, like very, very top leadership. Um, Agent Alphonse is going to be the like leader of Delta Green, um, uh, who is a librarian at the Library of Congress Research Division. That's their official job. And typically everybody who is in Delta Green, they are going to have real jobs, um, but they, which they, they might be like um, fishing game. Or like uh, they could be a park ranger, Yellowstone, or they could be a special, you know, they could be an FBI agent, or um, they could be a, a, a CIA agent or DEA or whatever, right? But typically your, your agents are going to be recruited through 
it's, I think it's mostly going to be military or law enforcement, but then there's going to be other people. Like, um, if we, uh, if we look at the agent's handbook, um, they give a lot, uh, there, I mean, there's tons and tons of different types of backgrounds, like, um, uh, physician, scientist, computer scientist, hacker, um, anthropologist, like, say that you are dealing with some kind of a cult, you know, in the United States that um, was like focused on some kind of African religion or something like that, like voodoo or, you know, um, Kabamba or like um, something like that. And um, one of the people on the team might be some kind of anthropologist who studies in, or sorry, who um, their focus is on like, um, South African or African religions like in uh, the Americas and they might speak Spanish and Portuguese or whatever and have some extensive knowledge of like voodoo or uh, Vodun or, you know, Kabamba, like things like that. And, um, and then your, you know, one of your agents could be like a, um, I don't know, a, a private investigator or, or even like a, a psychic, you know, or something who finds like missing children or, um, uh, but the, you know, the point is that, um, you don't have to be a federal agent, you know, you don't have to be military, um, like you could be a criminal or, or something. And, um, there, there could be some kind of a, um, just something that, that sort of, um, exposes this character to the supernatural. Right. Like where they, um, n you know, maybe they're a private investigator and they deal with some case where um, they uh, they see like a, a kid who's been possessed by a demon or something like that. And then that sort of uh, raises the attention of, of Delta Green and then they end up getting recruited by them. Or that could be like a scenario, like an introductory scenario, kind of explaining about how... Um, the characters became entangled with uh, Delta Green, right? But um, yeah, so getting back to the timeline, um, <clears throat> yeah, getting, you know, uh, 1990 or 1990s into 2000, um, Delta Green, or, or sorry, well, from like 1960, or sorry, 1970 to like 2000, um, Delta Green is going to operate under a cell structure like a, um, uh, I don't want to say like, I'm not going to say the T word. Um, but, uh, yeah, so in 2000 to, to onward, um, Delta Green does become a, um, a, uh, an official like government organization again. So, um, more like hiding in plain sight and has like official kind of funding and stuff like that. And, uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you, if you are playing this game, I just cannot stress how much fun it is to play during the, uh, the cowboy, cowboy years. Um, so yeah, uh, going, going back to, uh, Fairfield Project, um, Fairfield Project is, you know, totally free. Um, you're going to have, uh, oh, well, there's going to be a lot of information about here in here about like NPC characters and lore and things like that. Um, there's also going to be some really, really good little scenarios. Um, I forget what they call these. I think they call them like shotgun scenarios. Um, but you know, basically one shots or like quick games that you could play in like a few hours. Um, PX Poker Night is in here. Uh, I think Last Things Last. Caligati, like a lot of these are going to be official. Um, uh, yeah, Night Floors. And then Night Floors, the original Night Floors. Um, I, I talked about that one in the other video that I did. Night Floors and Impossible Landscapes is... Um, Impossible Landscapes, and this is an official published Delta Green book. 
Um, and then Night Floors, which is what Impossible Landscapes is based on, was a um, Call of Cthulhu scenario. But um, think like Rosemary's Baby. It's a, it's a really awesome scenario. But then there's going to be a lot of like fan-made stuff. Um, just like little um, scenarios and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Where's my favorite one? Uh, yeah, like these are just going to, a lot of these are just going to have links to um, other other games, like or, or sorry, other websites and stuff. Like here's a, um, here's a crossover with XCOM. <laughs> There's a, there's a, uh, yeah, uh, UFO Enemy Unknown 1994 crossover with XCOM for uh, Delta Green, which could be super fun. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so Fall of Delta Green, right? Um, this is the Gumshoe book that I found. Um, and then, yeah, gum, Gumshoe, like I mentioned this before, it's a very, very rules light system, and it's going to use a D6 or a 1D6 for, um, for resolving things like, um, uh, yeah, think of just a very, very simple D6 role play system. Um, like most people do have a D6 dice just lying around somewhere. You wouldn't even need to purchase any kind of RPG dice or anything to play. Um, but the thing that I love, um, about this book, um, is that <laughs> it, it, it's dark. <laughs> it's so typically I think, um, uh, you know, if you, if you are looking for a kind of like PG kind of game to play, um, I would say maybe stick with like Dungeons and Dragons. You know, if you're if you're planning on running this for your kids, um, I don't think it's gonna work. Uh, you know, like if 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 it's like teenagers, I, I think um, it's you know like PG thirteen to R rated. That's probably a lot more suitable. Um, but uh, the uh, the official like Delta Green handbook, like the player's handbook, when it's talking about uh, backgrounds and stuff, um, th it seems like almost a little bit sanitized compared to this gumshoe book that I found. Because <laughs> um, it's like, they, they talk a lot about like racism, like, uh, okay, like, here we go, like, the FBI makes the CIA look like Woodstock, um, <laughs> although a few black police officers joined the Bureau, almost all before Hoover became director, the first black agents are only accepted to the FBI Academy in 1962. The first female FBI agents are not sworn in until 1972. Um, homosexuals will not legally receive federal security clearances until 1995, which absolutely does not mean that there are no gay, le gay or lesbian members of the National Security community before that, their sexual or gender orientation is hardly the biggest secret that bisexual, gay, lesbian, or trans Delta Green agents must keep, even in the 1960s. Um, it's just that this is like, this is very, um, kind of like touches on some very like adult kind of dark themes, which I think just makes it so much better. Um, and then when they're talking about all of the backgrounds, though, there are so many, like this, uh, this goes so in depth about, um, some of the, um, the, like, backgrounds that you could pick for your agents. Like, say that you, you wanted to do a campaign, like, in 1969 in Vietnam, um, you, and you want to make a character who is like some has some kind of medical training, like um, uh, you could do a like a special forces team that could be like Mac Mac Vsog, um, 
military or something. Or I can't remember what it is, but it would have, it would be like a special forces division that would pull on like army rangers and um, uh, all kinds of like, like uh, Navy SEALs and, and CIA and um, have like all kinds of different special forces sort of working together on an operation, like going behind enemy lines into Cambodia to um, rescue POWs or um, like if you wanted to kind of do some kind of uh, a mission um, into Cambodia where like some kind of horrible botch raid happens in Cambodia, this is really going to give you a lot of information about some of the different um, like backgrounds, like military or also like um, the precursors to like drug enforcement agency or um, like some of the, the different um, like intelligence communities that would be around in the um, like in the um, 1960s um, in, uh, <clears throat> you know, in Vietnam, like Let's see, we've got, like, a psychological operations group, U.S. Army, um, USAIC Urban Intelligence Specialist, U.S. Army Intelligence Command. Um, and that is actually going to be in the United States. But, um, yeah, you know, just so much great information um, like we've got stuff about DARPA or, um, uh, it, it, I guess before it was DARPA, uh, Advanced Research Projects Agency, um, uh, like all kinds of different stuff, um, Atomic Energy Commission, CIA agents, um, like I was just blown away by how in-depth, um, some of this stuff goes into as far as like different different kinds of government agencies in the United States as well as um as some of the other um like uh equivalents from other countries and that's another thing that I love about Delta Green is that it adds this kind of military, like counterintelligence, um, espionage, counterespionage element to the game that adds, you know, a level of paranoia and um, just another layer of, of depth. Um, and uh, yeah, like, uh, let's see, we've got uh, here back on Fairfield Project, um, they have a very exhaustive list of different kind of um, different different groups that come up in the like the the lore the uh, the canon for Delta, Delta Green. Like, let's see, what have we got for international Catholic organizations that deal with the paranormal? Um, <laughs> the uh, the congregation, a network of officials of the Catholic Church that fight against the unnatural wherever and whenever it can be found, drawing on the spiritual legacy of the Inquisition. The group draws or lays on or lays officials of the church, as well as the daggermen of the Swiss Guard in order to break the, um, beat back the demons that plague the earth. The organization is noted for its fanatical resistance to any attempt to understand the unnatural, believing it to be more than the tricks of the devil, or be, believing it to be little more than the tricks of the devil. The attitude has managed to keep, or the yeah, the attitude has managed to keep the incidents of corruption and insanity originating from learning of the unnatural, but has left the organization's methods often outdated. Prayer beads and holy water feature as prominently in the congregation's arsenal as rifles and sun grenades. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, personally, um, I feel like. Like, I, I, I love Call of Cthulhu's 7th edition rules. Um, when, I, when I run games, I typically, well, okay, I always, 
I always use Call of Cthulhu 7th edition rules. I really prefer 7th edition rules. But I feel like Delta Green, if you are a fan of Call of Cthulhu, just, just get it. I mean, just check it out because like you're not going to be sorry. It, it just it just adds a layer of depth and um, you know, an extra layer of um uh <laughs> flavor, you know, depth. Um and and it just it's just going to add to your game. Um and you you know, you're not going to run Delta Green in Dark Ages. Like if you're going to do that, just run Call of Cthulhu. Um, or if you're going to do like, you know, go down the detective noir kind of route, um, just go call Cthulhu, like do a, um, do a detective story in 1920s or 1860s or whatever, um, you know, go Sherlock Holmes or whatever. But if you want to do something like 1970s onward into like the 2000s, check it out because it is amazing. Like it just it just adds so much to the game, and I just love it. Like I have gotten so immersed in all of the lore, and the books are so great. Um, like I don't have one right here with me right now, but um, they're you know they're hardback, or, or I mean you can get them. You can get like a soft cover, you know. Um, oh, I call it yeah. You can get not hardback books, Um, but if you do buy a book, you know, if you buy a Delta Green book from a bookstore or if you get it from Amazon or whatever, um, you can just take a picture of it, take a picture of your receipt or whatever, and then send it to um, Art Dream, and then they'll send you a link to the PDF. They'll 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 give you the PDF copies of the book on Drive Through RPG, and typically like all this stuff, um, like the the Fall of Delta Green, this one that I just that I absolutely love, this book, um, the the Gumshoe um, Fall of Delta Green book. This is out of print. You're, I don't think that there's a snowball's chance of hell of you actually finding this anywhere. Um, if, if you do find it, or I mean, I think that anybody who does have a copy of this is hanging on to it where you can pry it from their cold dead fingers. But, um, if you do see this in a bookstore or something, pick it up, but, but you can get the, um, the PDF on, uh, drive through RPG and, uh, and then, you know, all this stuff like the, the PDFs are, are going to be out there. But if you do buy a book, you can just send, um, you can send Art Dream, like just show them your receipt, show them show them a, a picture of the book, show them that you bought it, and then they'll send you the PDFs to uh, you know put on your your laptop or put into your um, your personal like Notion or whatever to keep in your notes. But yeah, um, that's gonna be it, you guys, and um, I hope that you check it out. Um, I absolutely love the Delta Green lore. It just like the scenarios are pretty amazing. They're pretty adult. Um, they're not really for kids. Um, but you know, like teenagers, like I think you could run it for teenagers. Um, or if you know, you have like a group of adult friends, you know, it's, I think you're really going to enjoy it. If you, if you're a fan of horror, you know, if you, if the idea of playing a horror RPG in a modern setting, if that appeals to you, I think you're really, really going to like it. But yeah, so take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one.